Hello. There you go. Uh-huh. It must be cold in BC. It is freezing here. I've heard. It's uh, no, it's actually quite nice outside. But you're wearing a duke, so I assumed it was cold. Nah, I just I like hats on my head. I'm a I'm a hat guy. Okay. So it's it's cold again. We need, you know what? We'll take the rain and the snow and whatever form it comes. The farmers need it. Mm. So I'm I'm trying to be grateful that we're getting this weather. I'm just really cold, so. <laughs> So how is your week? How are things going? You know, it's been kind of interesting. I'm feeling really discombobulated. I'm going through a major shift and letting go of some stuff. I can just feel it, but it, what it's doing is it's like, it's making me really off balance. Mm. I stayed home this week, so I didn't go to Yorkton at all, which is unusual for me, but I just thought, you know, I just am so tired and I'm going, so I'm gonna try and be home this week. And I kind of had a revelation as far as like mortgage clients that were showing up because like I had an intense week last week, like I couldn't even think, Mm. Um, but realizing that I don't want to put energy into things that like, it's okay to say no, is kind of the position I'm coming from. Like, because, because I love giving people hope and I love helping them see possibilities i often overextend myself or i put energy into things that isn't beneficial because that's just the genuine nature of who i am so i kind of had a revelation that you know because you'll get files for mortgages and you can kind of tell that you know like not that you would turn people away but when you start looking into it people don't if they don't want to hear what you have to say then they don't listen and they keep going and then you end up so you know just saying that no and then also really like shifting my perspective around money because really for like a long time when we had our business we were have not because in the sense that when we ran our restaurants we often wouldn't get paid because we would always pay everybody else and do that so I'm really challenging my thinking a little bit around that and trying to break free of like thinking about what Lori, you know, Lori talks a lot about, um, you know, how many of your kids would hear, well, we can't afford that. We can't do that. So shifting that perspective, because I think it changes how you see things. So I'm going through a shift. (laughs) Well, I think, have you looked at your value system in in a while? I have, and I think it's shifted from what we talked about. And I think what started it for me, Elijah, was um, what you did with us last week. Mm. Because I, you know what, I really realized how much I love entrepreneurship and supporting people and helping them in that journey. And I don't think I ever really realized that until we put those five things, right? And I am a very artistic, creative person. And I I think so often um, that does show up in business through marketing and different things like that. But we've, like I grew up where if you were artistic, because I had a lot of friends that were very, because I grew up in BC. So we're very much like the far, far artistic, like the guys I grew up in high school with stop washing their hair to have dreads and we're all like into that natural stuff and nothing wrong with that but it was always like this clear defined you couldn't exist in the world as a creative unless you were a very far extreme and so as I've gone through my last journey like I need that creative outlet for myself and that's why I do my succulents and I love being around plants and doing that and so I think what's happening for me is I've been breaking down the barriers that it has to be one or the other because, you know, like, and, and so just even thinking about masterminds, right? Like I, I've kind of taken this last week and stepped off stuff unintentionally. So I didn't do that post. I just realized how much energy I've been expelling and then there wasn't much left. So I've been really reevaluating that and starting to line up things a bit differently. So taken a lot of time off which I don't normally do um, because they kind of burn through so much energy the last little while and and then realizing 
you know, like be, I can channel my way of helping people in a positive way in the sense like when people have an idea or even, you know, for example, like how you've talked about this stuff that you've done and you've just been waiting for someone to want to run with it and do it. Realizing that, um, like, I, I love that process of for you, like, for example, if you and I were working together and you have this idea and thing, and it's just a matter of getting it out there and figuring out and I know you're you're you you know you're waiting for the right people, but for people who have this gift and this talent, tapping into how do you actually put that out there so it is a business that you can do what you love? <laughs> well, That's I a guess. Lot of ten minutes. <laughs> well, I want to go back to you said you might have changed the values or I mean the, the thing what happens that I've seen is that the, the the depth of the profound change that happens when you sort of make this map like it I, I can't even explain it because it seems a little mysterious to me that how can you just make a map and then all of a sudden you know it's it's like bringing this big magnifying glass I guess and it's showing you what you want and what you don't want showing you what you like and what you don't like and some of the values may you know, may not work. Like right? I've had patterns in in certain situations where I didn't realize it until months later, where that specific value did not work, and that's why I was feeling so much pain, or that's why, you know, like I've had radical changes. Like let's say bringing detachment to relationships, and just you put that in, and all of a sudden it's like, ah, oh, ah. And when you know what? Sorry, go no. on. So, so like the thing I'm probably struggling to resonate with, knowing my personality as the builder, right, and getting stuff going and moving stuff forward, I've really found that I am like, I don't want to fix this problem and, and almost resenting that part of myself. And, and because I'm quite internal, when stuff shows up, I know something's out of alignment, and there's something so I, I'm trying to understand what it is that's because I love that part about myself and that's what I thrive and love to do and and so even just looking at kind of what's been happening with the visionary hub and how I almost feel like we stalled a little bit because we were throwing all this energy into stuff that and I, I guess I'll back up I really felt when I first started connecting with the group not so much Carrie because she's removed but you know, Lori and Sylvia, that it was what we're working through with you now was what I was really trying to get them to identify, like, what is the essence of what we are, right? And, and we kind of got so focused on the events that we kind of have now have this gap in what we are and, and, and how does that manifest continually, right? And so it, it's, it's figuring out how to bring that back into alignment. And I think where I'm, I'm feeling frustrated is because of, okay, let's get stuff done and let's do it. When you have someone, you know, like we are all just, I think, like if I look at four corners, right? We're all kind of in our four corners, but we're not aligning in that middle because that core value or essence is missing only simply because we maybe have defined it, but we haven't taken everything through. If 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 our, our core value is say enlightenment for people, for lack of a better term, everything we're doing isn't following that thread. So what's happening is you have each of us with all of our abilities and skill sets just as these really strong, almost like star fireballs, right? Like we're just so lit up, but we're not intersecting at all much right now. So you have like the promoter that's seeing all these opportunities and going after all this stuff. And you have the organizer that's doing all this back stuff. And you know, you have the designer that's doing this and, and the builder. And so we're almost like our lights burning out a bit because we're not utilizing each other and we're each trying to drive more momentum as opposed to focusing our momentum. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. 
So I'm, I'm at a bit of a loss because I'm, I don't have the answer yet. And that's unusual for me as a builder. And it's not that I need the answer, but typically I find with someone with my personality and capacity, when you see scenarios, you often know what the solution is. And so you, it's easy to keep moving it forward. And so we, you know, I'm just, I'm feeling like, okay, so how do we lay this out? Because I think this is what happens for a lot of people and doing something is you stall out at this point because you have all this energy and this force and this focus and then as you go on with any business and anything you need to refocus and actually tear away what isn't serving you anymore and I just and I we're going away next weekend so that is naturally going to happen for us yeah but I'm just finding yeah so that's kind of where I find I'm in my whole life right now, because you know, when you can feel like there's a monetary shift going on, mm. you just I can feel it. So I'm reluctant to do anything because I'm waiting for everything to realign. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, what you say makes sense. I get it. And, you know, obviously being in a different city and uh, Carrie being in a different city. I mean, that's you know, that's significant when you're basing a business out of a space um, that's in Yorkton, right? I mean, that's, that's a big thing, you know, and for you to drive down. And I imagine that, you know, it's kind of like getting, I guess, like four people together. And no matter what, at some point, you're going to like each of you has the ability, let's say, to make your own living. And, and you're already doing it, right? And so now what you have to do is you got to give up time for your own thing. Like if you just put all that time, you put in the visionary hub into your own thing, you know, you'd have a much more, let's say, balanced life and a more, a lot easier to deal with is, you know, to me, when we're independent, we have our own decisions, we can have our own clients, and then that's just what we're doing, right? And but I, what I've gotten from you is, is, you know, your dedication to the bigger picture, your dedication to the bigger vision, your dedication to these p other people is there's a, some party that wants to work with other people and wants to work on bigger things together. And you can't do that by yourself. Right. So there's this push me, pull me of going, it'd be a lot easier if I did by myself, but there's much greater rewards in the long run, if I can get through whatever this is. And, and since you're, let's say, usually in a position on the outside, kind of like me being contractor, come in to help a, a team where, you know, it's very different than being on the team where you, you don't seem, you don't like, I know you'd like to be in my situation where you kind of meet with the people and, and do your thing. And then you're, you're moving people forward. Right. But all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're where you are and I'm here. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I, I think you're a hundred percent right. And I think part of, um, Part of what it is, is um, the, um, it's easier to be in your position because you have a little bit more liberty in how you say things versus when you're on the team, because like, not that I'm not liberal and open, but I'm noticing certain things are happening, like um, confidentially between you and I, Kaylee is absolutely in the wrong place to be working with us and there's some dissension within our team with her okay and and i really like kaylee but because i'm not so close to her there's a lot of behaviors and tendencies that she exhibits with other people that i pick up on and i just don't put up with and so um so it's creating a little bit of a challenge because she's not helping us be closer together she's actually driving us apart uh so, you know, and we've talked about that a little bit. And like last week, um, she was really upset and had a whole conversation with Sylvia about me and how she didn't like that she wasn't part of it. And, and so, you know, and, and, and I, I just said, you know, just tell her to come talk to, you know, like, if we're all part of this, it's not fair that one person carries the burden. And so I think, Part of my reluctance to go back there is because I just don't feel at ease there anymore because Kaylee's there three days a week. And I feel like she's manipulates so much of what goes on because she wants to be part of it and her capacity as an employee. Not that employees don't have value, not that employees 
can't do a lot, but I, I operate a lot on, I'm not a micromanager. So if someone wants to take something on, do it, ask me for guidance, roll with it. But as soon as you start showing that you're not following through and not doing stuff, then I, my faith and trust disappears. And I just, and so I think that's part of what it is for me. And so I'm trying to combat that within myself. And then also too, right? Like Lori's gone through a whole shift of being a sole entrepreneur with employees to now having four business owners and the way you operate and do things is different. So that's a shift for her as well. Right. And so I think it's just, trying to figure out how to speak my truth so it's constructive and not to be like Teflon. So whatever happens, because I think this is where things can start to get off course. Mm. Well, I think when, you know, the, let's say when you and Carrie came in and I was, you know, and I could see, let's say Kaylee was very sort of close and then I thought she might be one of the four, mm -hmm. you know, and that, and that I'm sure she probably thought she was one of the four. And so I think from her point of view, not being part of that four and having the, the two new people in, that's a, that was a major kind of like, especially at the age of 20, you think, Hey man, I'm in. And then all of a sudden, wait, who are these people? I'm not on the team. And that, that's, that's a big thing I think to deal with. I, th I, I could sense that that was going to be hard for her. And, I think it's not that we didn't want her there like and I just simply came back and I no, said let me finish let me finish. oh sorry um and so and I think with both you know you and Carrie are both so strong let's say right like you're she's a principal really? of the school I mean you're I mean you're you're a force right <laughs> so again it's not it's just not two normal people you've got two lions two lions coming into the zoo right and you know and more from a business point of view right so you're coming in and you run a business you know how to run a business and you know younger people it's very different right like they, they don't know what they don't know and they don't know you know they think they're doing great and maybe you can see boy you could do that 10 times better but if you try to tell them then they feel like it's too critical and then you it, you know all these communication things start happening right so i mean obviously that's happening and I think one thing, I think I would like to talk to Kaylee. I think I, I had one little talk with her, but I think there needs to be someone from the outside of the whole thing, kind of help her get perspective on things. Uh, because I think that, you know, there, the way, as you said, like there's a dynamic now that has to kind of get burst, right? That has to, and I'm sure if you look at her value system and your value system, it's some, you know, there's some sort of like intersection. So I want to go back to that in terms of your value system, because you said, you wanted to change it or because you've got boldness at field purpose at resources abundance at jobs strength at activities courage at product integrity at relationships freedom at path um what do you have at eight i had i only have ess <laughs> so i have intention Goodness is in personal space. Okay, no, I'm wondering 2.8 at uh, oh, this on, on the flow wheel. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so 2.8 is goodness still. Okay, goodness. Okay, Okay. so where, if you looked at those, because the thing about values is that they're actually the source of most conflict is when you have differing values, right? And so if, you, if you're valuing something like goodness and you don't think they're good at marketing, <laughs> that's that's going to be a problem, right? Because I think that's where she was being placed. Or that's where some of the uh, problems were, right? Yeah, like um, and and I think it, it, it's interesting because um, what I observed I was totally what you were saying. She thought that, and I think there's um, just age and experience and different things feels like her place is being taken by me because I showed up and and I just you know and, and and what I had said to Lori and Sylvia when this first started to show up is is she prepared to make a lifelong commitment because if she wants to be part of this for sure but where is she three months from now right and and stuff and so um yeah and and I think you're right like um you know maybe it's 
and, and I don't know, right? Like, cause obvious, I think what it is for me is honestly, it would be 2.6. That's the one that for me is bonds and integrity. And I think I feel like the integrity of the relationship has been broken and I don't have the energy to keep building, bringing integrity to it because I don't feel like it's coming from her side, right? And I feel foolish even having this conversation because, you know, I'm the grown up and I can step back, but I need to figure out how to recognize it in my head so that it's not a barrier for me so I can let it go. Right. Well, it's, it's the first major disconnect right and these are the things that can kill operations right and it's it's important and it's it's it, it needs like the clearing convo i don't know how good are would you say are you at clearing convos um i, I don't know if i know exactly what that is <laughs> okay did you um i sent you th three sets of the combo types yes and um, did you look at them? I, oh, I did. And so I looked at them and I thought, but it's interesting because the way I interpret the word, even with that, I might not apply it to the same context of the conversation. Okay. So meaning so, yeah. you have a different meaning for a clearing convo? convo? Well, maybe the way that I'm just going through, because you sent, you sent them by email, right? I'll just open yeah. it up right now. Meaning because I know for sure, like I've looked at all of them and then the last two I really dug into and there were maybe a couple and I just can't remember. I need to think um, can't remember if that was one of them. So just a sec, I'm gonna open it up and I'll read the definition again. So the synergy combo cards in digital form, I have stewardship conversations and learning. The synergy. Okay. <laughs> you know, it was interesting because when uh, last Tuesday, this was exactly what I put on the hub factor in the evening, that was my whole thing. And the cards that showed up for me were kind of that revelation. Well, I shared that on Thursday, right? Where my revelation was taking my personal self out of the circumstance to help. And I think internally I'm fighting that. Mm. And, and so, cause this would be probably the biggest area of growth that I think I would see things quite differently if I could really own this is the wrong thing, but if I could embrace that, because like misunderstanding and resentment are probably two things that most of my young life I grew up having. You mean directed at you or in? I felt like I was resent, like I was a source of resentment for my dad and my mom constantly misunderstood me. Okay. Okay. Well, that's great to identify that. So yeah. So so just in terms of the clearing con like like to me the, the clearing convo could be you know one of the most difficult conversations and for a while i mean i was sort of taught it by a teacher but i was again in that younger role with an older man and he would keep working me <laughs> whenever i was doing something wrong and then we'd have to have a clearing convo right <laughs> so we were we got in the habit of we were having a lot of clearing convos, but it was kind of like, it was always like, you'd say, okay, I got to clear something with you. You wouldn't just open up and say, I'm going to criticize, or this is what's wrong. You go, Hey, can we have a clearing convo? So both know that you're kind of going into something that's difficult. And, and the essence of the clearing convo is, you know, basically you state your case, then the other person states their case. And then neither interrupts and neither sort of like you just sit there and listen. And then you state your case. And then the other person states their case. And you just keep going back and forth until both feel clear. Because usually the problem is we want the other person to know how we feel, what we think. And if both can sit there and listen, uh, beautiful things can happen. But if you tend to get argumentative or you get defensive or you interrupt, or you say that's not true or all the things that humans can do when they don't really clear, but they're arguing, 
so a clearing is, is, is most of it is, you know, you're listening to the, to what they are saying and vice versa. And if that doesn't happen, then you might need a third person who's, who's going to mediate and say, you know, basically go, now you talk, now you talk, now you talk. But in, in a lot of families, like we didn't clear anything. Like we, we had resentments of 10 years. And if I hit you with one over here, you'd hit me with five over here. And so you never brought, nobody brought anything up, right? You just kind of pile them in the background. And so for me, it wasn't until much later on that I learned that, you know, the clearing convo is something that is there. You have to master it. Nothing is going to get better unless you, clear, you, you master this. And so within the shared knowledge community or within the visionary hub, like all of these let's say every problem is fuel for progress. Like everything that you guys are going to go through are going to be how you help others with what they go through. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's a bit simple, but it's true. And so for you and Kaylee to clear, um, it may take a conversation from me first to help out just to give some feedback. Um, or maybe not, maybe you guys can do it on your own. But I mean, even, I mean, I could feel it from you <laughs> or I can, I can, you know, I can, I get sort of spidey senses about things. So, I mean, I'm, um, I think we all do, right? Uh, but, but it's, it's like the, as you said, the bond between the four of you hasn't quite gelled into that, you know, here's the vision and here are the value. So one of the things you're gonna do is you're gonna create your synergy value system and so that's going to be that point of bringing the values together, right? So each of you has your individual values coming in. But I see that, I mean, you're the only person, I think, maybe Lori did, but I think of, of all the people I've done that you've, you've used the five values in your, in your five spaces map with, and you put them on the flow. So it's kind of like two aces or three of a kind. You, you've doubled them up. And I think that's, that can be very powerful. And I think that what I'm sensing is your goodness at your personal space and your goodness at your flow. And then you've got freedom at sacred space and freedom at the path, right? Those are very strong in group space. You've got integrity and then integrity at 2.6 relationships. In community space, you've got purpose. And so these are very, very strong, right? And again, it's kind of like they may be strong, but they can also be the source of a lot of conflict or disappointment within somebody, right? Because if, if people aren't matching your standards, you know, that's, that's where our, our dissatisfaction comes from. So what you've done is you've defined them very strongly within this idea. And now they're acting as boundaries where you come in contact with people. And so the, the worst, I don't know if it's the worst thing that humans have, but righteous anger, right? Like I have integrity of relationships and it's, I don't feel it here. And all of a sudden, you know, the relationship ends and, you know, maybe compassionate relationships, um, you know, maybe flexibility at relationships, maybe detachment at relationships, or maybe forgiveness at relationships. Like there may be other values that maybe because there's the values we have and then there's the values we sort of need to learn. And, and if we're very strong in this area, we don't even have to think about it. It means in this area, we may be weak and we, we, we may never bring it up. And so it's kind of like creating a balanced value system that also gives you peace of mind. You're <laughs> no, I'm thinking because I'm wondering, could I not have two? Could I, I obviously have this one, yeah. could I not take another one and do it to put the values there that I want to learn in that space that will make me a better human? So instead of, you know, like removing, because to me, I don't like the idea, I, I love the idea of learning. And absolutely, I recognize that there's some huge opportunities because I think what happens is um, I have I've been on a journey the last year to create more 
less, not less structure, but more flexibility in my structure. Because um, just like when you make, um, you're laying concrete, you use rebar because you want it to be solid. But when you're building a bridge and you're driving over the bridge, you have the cables because what they need to do is they need that give and take. And so I really have been feeling like my structure has been challenged. And so instead of it crumbling, it's like I need to start putting stuff into place so that I can be. So I like that idea of, because I don't want to be the thing that um, limits stuff from happening. And I think for myself, just because of my personality style and just the way things go, I often can get rigid in those things, which creates conflict, whether I know it or not, but I can feel it. And so I really like the idea of being able to say, okay, you know what? I don't, I want to let that go. And I want to be able to learn a new skill so that I can be a better person, regardless of what happens with the other people, because it's not about them, it's about me. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would say you could have another map, another flow map, and and throw on values you want to learn. I think that that could be a very interesting um, experience. Um, I, again, sometimes like it's very powerful. Like I, 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 I wish, sometimes I wish I could warn people a bit because it's it's i think we're here to realize values that's that's like our lessons come down at some point to these values and and with this system it's more it gets very precise so if you have goodness at path it's 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 making it very precise right as opposed to just sort of get goodness everywhere and then you have all the values working together and each at a different kind of time cycle so it's your your mind is being given something that inherently is going to destroy it in the sense of your patterns. When you bring in another operating system that is more conscious, those patterns now are going to, you know, you're, you get more aware. You, you, can I give you a little bit of feedback? I would love to hear rebuild instead of destroy, because as soon as my conscious mind hears the word destroy, it bites it because it says, I'm good. Why do I want to do that? Right. Nice. But for me, it's like, okay, no, I'm rebuilding those patterns to emerge into something better. Yes, that sounds much better. Like, as soon as you said that, my subconscious mind goes, no, like, why? <laughs> you ain't touching me. <laughs> right. Right. So, you know, because I think like ultimately you need to have this detachment from self and, and that's ego. Right. And I think that's a really challenging state to get to because it almost is like you're. I don't even know how to put it into words, but to me, it, it's like this visualization of just the sense of being I think superheroes are like the best example when you see those superpowers and different things like that because it's it's like they understand there's the essence of something that exists there that they don't own or control but they're in alignment with that and I think that's almost because like I'm a huge Marvel fan and I love all that kind of stuff uh -huh. and so I like to me I can really resonate with that but it's i am really struggling because i don't want to detach from myself because i, I i'm afraid i'll be lost hmm. Hmm. and so when i look at this and i think and and i can just almost feel it in myself i think you're 100 percent right putting a different value that i need to learn within that bond space even in that past space and that strategy space, right? Like, cause what I'm going to do, like, cause these are all really strong. And I think that is for people good and bad. Not everyone can handle a strong personality and because it creates things in them that it, it, when you run into someone really strong, you either get resentful because you wish you were that way, or it's like too much. Right. And so when I put, really like I have calm in here 
and courage. To me, those are softer words. Um, but when I look at like strength, abundance, purpose, boldness, goodness, integrity, those like are just very powerful words. And so you create this field that becomes so intense that for people, unless they're in the same sphere or space, you know, like I look at Sylvia and even though she might not be operating with such bold words, she's at such a balanced place that it's, man, maybe she would say something different, but I don't get the sense from her that she feels intimidated by those things. She's open to learn them herself. And the same with Lori, right? And, and I think it's the same with Carrie, but I think when you run into people who, yes, age is a huge thing, right? They're in a different space that they don't necessarily process it as a way of being helpful. They see it as, as almost a conflict, right? And so even though they may serve me well, what it does is it limits the people that I can connect with. And I don't know that you want to connect with everybody, right? Like I think as a teacher, you can hold a place for what you've learned and where you're at and be open to the fact that people are going to come and go and those ones will stop that actually are in a place to receive it, right? And being okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, I guess it's kind of like having the rapport of the, the key people is important. You want to feel comfortable, right? You, you, you really, I mean, it, to me, it's, I mean, you're obviously all feeling it and something has to kind of happen in order to get the field back to sort of like synergy state, right? Like the full trust zone. And so, you know, and that's just, you got to look at everything that's coming up and, and, have to deal with it. and so the ideas the tools can actually help have you have you done the trust map yet myself or as a team no yourself uh what does it look like just bring it up here It'll just take a bit um so it's green it's eight you we have we ever done a trust map probably i mean if we had you probably have it right is that with all like the nine squares? No, that's the that's the the life map. Uh, I don't think we have. Okay, so that this could be another thing that we could do. Um, You've shown it to me, but I don't think we've ever done this one. I didn't hear the last thing you said, sorry. I can't hear you. you hear me? Now I can, yeah. Okay, would you like to take a look at this? Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. Okay. In what way? Um, it almost sums up exactly the process I need to do. Okay. When I'm reading this, it, it's like even just internally for myself, if I like, if you can send this to me, I, I think what it, what it will do 
is it'll really help me identify what are those areas that I'm struggling with, right? Like, so if I go through and I, I feel a conflict or, you know, with the person and I go through each area and identify it, then what I can do is I can, I can examine it and I can say, okay, so what can I do to change that? Or what needs to happen? Do we need to have a clearing conversation? You know, like, do I need to spend more time understanding where they're at? Like, and I can really use it for a tool for myself. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a tool, which if everyone's using it, right, you, you can pull it out and go, okay, let's go through this during the clearing conversation and go, where, where did you break down or where, did, where are we off here? Because I, I think if you and Kaylee, you know, can get through this and use the tools, then that's part of the whole thing, right? We're using the tools to get through the conflicts. We're using the tools to get further clarity. We're using the tools to sort of take a step forward and it's not, you know, definitely it's not easy, but it's kind of like, as you get used to, like, you guys have to bond, you guys have to find a connection, right? And that at some point, you know, sometimes the people in the schoolyard, right? They get into a fight, get into a fist fight, and then they become best friends, right? So it's, it's like knowing that at some point you guys are, are, are going to attain that closeness. But I think a lot has to do with the use of your energy. Because I, th I think that both of you energetically, you know, there's something going on there that um, is reflecting, I, is reflecting each other. But it's funny because half our team, so two of us feel the same way about Kaylee and two of us feel the other way. Right. And so I guess where I am struggling is I don't see her value because I, 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 and, and I'm not saying, I'm saying that's a me thing, but it's, it's like 10, it's like two steps forward and 10 steps back. Okay. In what manner? You mean so uh, we had stayed, I stayed over one night with Lori and Kaylee stayed and visited and she opened up and shared a bunch of stuff and we were quite close and she was telling Lori and then something came up to do with, um, there was a level of frustration for Lori around Kaylee's follow through and her commitment to helping her on stuff. So Kaylee shows up and Lori's asking her and Sylvia's doing it. And so then I'm there and Kaylee's like, I, I called Kaylee on her shit, basically, like, sh and she didn't like that. And so, ev so ever since then, right, because no one holds her accountable, but me, right. And I think right. that's the frustration, right? Because, for example, there to be use happening a week from Monday. And that was Kaylee's real area to shine. And I keep hearing from the group that they're not seeing anything happening with it. And, and it just is one, all my, all my time with Kaylee is her not following through. So that's, that's, there's a follow-up conversation at operations. But um, the challenge is there's not a safe space to do that because I'm the only one holding her accountable to that standard. Her, I guess Carrie and I are, but Sylvia, not as much, Lori definitely doesn't push for that and so the challenge becomes inconsistency right and so I'm kind of at that spot that I will just remove myself from it because it's exhausting to be in that place and and I guess I you know Carrie and I have a very different perspective of when you hire someone to come in to do a job and that's their responsibility and the expectation then that's the expectation versus if they're coming in as a mentor person, that's completely different, right? And so the challenge comes around the fact, what role are we wanting her to play? You know, is like, because if when she's an employee, they wanted an employment contract and they wanted all these things put in place. But then when push came to shove and Kaylee didn't like it, it's like, well, maybe this isn't right. And it's like, but you've asked for it. And that's what you said. So when it was supplied and the person doesn't like it, why are we changing it when this is what we agreed on? Right. So the integrity at relationships directly contradicts. 
Yeah, and I think it it for me the integrity with almost and what we're saying is confidential, right? I'm just trying to talk and process it. Yeah. Um, I almost feel like I've lost integrity, like the way I view Lori and integrity, because anything to do with Kaylee, it's like it's Kaylee, and it's not about sides, but it's like what Kaylee says, and when she complains, it's like that's what becomes important instead of as a four founder going to my equal and saying, "Hey, Kaylee." You know, I hear what you're saying, but we need to facilitate a conversation with everybody because I'm not a sounding board for you and in this capacity, because then it becomes someone's responsibility to fix it. And so I almost feel like Kaylee has more authority and place in this state of four than I do. And, and I kind of feel like, what's the point? Because I'm putting in a lot of stuff, right? And, right. and it is nothing to do with Kaylee's value and nothing to do like I would love to see nothing more than her run with the youth component take it on let us mentor you you shape it but she doesn't want to deliver on that she wants to be her own lone wolf and do what suits her in her time fair enough that's where she's at so, so she wants to do what she wants to do in her time like in relationship to what she's doing at the visionary hub or in relationship to what she's doing with Lori or just in relationship to herself so she likes things we're doing at the visionary hub but she wants to learn them and take them and use them in her business not her business be part of the visionary hub oh really she's she's directly said that she said to lori i love the values map i think i want to learn it and take it and be the expert and do that okay um and, and that's not a bad thing but that no. keeps kind of coming up and that's where the challenge is because it, it you know like um I look at I guess and I mean this was a conversation I look at myself with my business and the stuff that I'm doing I am trying to take the stuff I'm learning to ultimately like yes I'll use them to be better but I'm not trying to build a business outside of what my mortgage business is separate right like it's it's but when I look at my consulting and my stuff, I want nothing more than the work I'm doing there to reflect back to the hub. And those people I'm working with and become clients of the hub. I don't want to keep them as clients for myself because the work we do. But um, and, and, and this, I mean, maybe it shifted a little bit, but those are the red flags for me that come up. Right. And and create that um, the concerns because it's like where are we at or you know and, and so that's where I'm struggling a little bit because I don't feel like we're playing from the same field I feel like we're playing different sports right and even the conversation has come up where Kaylee's like well I work for LR Futures so she works for Lori even though she's working for the hub right and so different because and 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 so, and I just said, how do you guys want, like, Lori, how do you want to handle this? Because if she wants to work for all our futures, that's fine. But if she's working for the hub, then there's four people with a common expectation. So, I mean, I think Lori told me that she, it's percentages, right? It's like 30, 30, 30 or something or? For what? Sorry. For Kaylee's time. Some of it's. Yeah. So. Futures, some of it's. Five hours is for LR Futures, and it was, and maybe it shifted. Ten hours was for the hub. Okay. And and so, to me, it, and if it shifted, I, I just need to know because just to find whatever it's going to be, and right. I can totally just work with that, and I'm okay with that. Right. But don't it? We have to be consistent in what that is, right? Because if it's ten hours for the hub, and I think this is where the conflict comes in it's like okay 10 hours you're doing pr and marketing and this so this is the expectation and I, I it just seems like for me i'm like it is so much work because you can't just treat her like an employee and i don't mean that in a bad way because i guess i reference back to like when we had the restaurant and we had 40 staff right so we had employees it was never, I never was, you're my employee. We all work together. But the bottom line is you're not carrying the same responsibility. So you have responsibilities to get the job done. Right. And so if that's not the case, then 
we need to change the definition of what that is. You know, and part of it is, well, why isn't she part of all the planning for our school program and our this and our that? And, and you know, I because she's doing marketing. And I said, like, honestly, my perspective from marketing is you don't want to be part of all the planning because you want to be there when you're taking the product out to the world. So we need to figure out what we're taking out to the world, what it is. Not that they can't contribute to it, but ultimately their role is here. And it's like that it's different if the person has kids or they love children or they're doing that. And that's somebody you're pulling information from. So I'm just, I'm not sure because, and then it was like, oh, that makes sense. But, you know, it, it's like, is she there to do marketing or is she there to, to do the plan? And I think, you know, and that's kind of, I think where Carrie and I line up in some ways, because it's like, well, an employee is someone that has responsibilities and has checklists and things that need to get done. That's why they're being paid for those things. Right. I'm just bringing up another map that I think may help clarify. Um, Cause I, I think a lot has to do with, you know, if you're in a school, and you're a student in a school, you know, that's very different from being a teacher in a school. Like that's a very easy distinction. Mm -hmm. And let's say you have like format for what I want to have all this stuff coming through at some point. I mean, essentially I am the school of conscious communication. There are originators, administrators, teachers, uh, facilitators, students, and clients. Mm -hmm. And so that's very distinct, right? And, yes. and, and the thing about the maps is the maps create the boundaries that distinguish, you know, the relationships. And let me just get this one here. So here's the, the map I just told you about, right? Yes. So in this situation, because I think you guys are essentially a school whether you know it or not. Oh, we've said that ourselves. You're a hundred percent right. That, like, and I've had visions of that, Elijah. Okay. So the people like, it's, it's, it's like at the beginning of everything, right? I mean, if there's a beginning, it's kind of uh, unstructured and there's some people hanging out and you think, you think everybody's the same, but as you go along, more structure comes in as it grows. And then all of a sudden the friends, might not be as friendly because one's a teacher and one's a student and, and you didn't know it or they didn't know it. Yes. And, and I think that the, um, that what you're going through and at least what I'm putting forward, right, is a whole bunch of tools, a whole bunch of distinctions, a whole like new for everybody. So that's, that's one big thing, right? That's, that's coming in and the idea is that the tools can be used by everyone to do what they want with them, essentially, right? Yes. And, and I think that, you know, Kaylee and Lori have a more of a mentoring relationship. And yes. so their relationship is, is going to be obviously a lot tighter. They've got the history, you know, they're, they're like family, right? They're, they're like a mom daughter kind of relationship in many ways. And so. Yeah, no. Absolutely. Yeah. So that again is kind of like if, if we bring in um, another map. Could you send me that, like that map you just had? I feel like that is what the hub is missing. Okay. Because okay. the shared knowledge community map is so big that we're trying to find those pieces. But if we broke it down into what you just showed, I think that would help everybody. Okay. Um, cause we've had people show up that would fit in that. Um, and I think what you, um, what you just said to me, you're a hundred percent right with Lori and Kaylee. It's like mom and daughter. Yeah. Right. And I think where I'm feeling the discourse is when we get back into our group of four or three, that mom and daughter relationship happen separately from what's happening at the hub and not because you need those mentorship relations like I'm not saying we all can't take on that mentorship role but I I think it's like okay with the four of us that needs to be brought up differently than 
like, because it'd be no different. My mom showing up on Tuesdays and advocating for me versus, you know, encouraging me to say, okay, I hear what you're saying. I want to support you in going to have those conversations with those people. How do you want to do that? Yeah. And here, here's another map that has six distinct meta conversations. So these, this is like higher than the 72 that you, that are in the deck. This is part of the deck, but it's like social service, business, intimate friendship and family. Yes. And so, you know, their relationship probably a lot of time is in the service or almost like a bit like family, a bit of friendship, right? Like mentorship is a very, mentorship is difficult. I've done it quite a lot. I've been on one end and I've been on the other and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's one of the most powerful relationships, but it's also one of the most difficult, right? The young person wants to get out of the shadow and go do their stuff, and, but, but they're tied to this older person who's actually teaching them stuff. And, and at some point, like, and Lori's had people where she has mentored them. And I don't know if you know this from the past, but, and, and then that person sort of wanted to take the work and run with it and sort of diss Lori, right? So, I mean, Lori has her own history of mentorship with people where just like a lot of us, right? Where it doesn't go well. And sometimes if it doesn't go well, it changes how we are with people. And it's just another sort of a parameter of what, what's going on here. And I think that like when you're in a business and you're really in business, you know, like you, you're running a restaurant, you, <laughs> you're, you're not socializing with the people they're not socializing, right? They're here to do a job and they're here to do this. And, and I think in the hub, because it's more of a, a space, you know, that anything could happen. It, you know, people don't necessarily walk in the door and go, okay, I'm on the clock and now I got to get this done like in a normal business where other things are occurring. So I think part of the, the, cause I had a dream space. I had this big building and the idea of dream space, everyone came in, think, you know, you think I can create my dreams, I can do whatever I want. And you know, you can, but maybe you can't kind of thing. You know? So again, this is, I sent you six of these, there's six of them. And so uh, each of them can work with each other. Like here's another one where you're going potential probationary, active, inactive, dying and dead. And so the people coming in, right, they're, they're potential. And what are they? They could be a potential teacher. They could be a potential originator. They could be a potential facilitator. And if you don't identify them correctly for what they are, then you're going to communicate differently, right? You're, you're not maybe going to see the, oh, this, an originator, someone like me, they're not the same. You know, they're, they're going to be eccentric. They're going to have a massive amount of work. They're going to need tons of support to get their work into the world, right? But a facilitator is someone who, hey, I just want to learn something so I can go facilitate out there and make a living. And a student is someone, I don't know anything. I don't have any skills. <laughs> and I need to learn these skills from you. And, and if from the get-go, because you guys haven't set up your processes, you haven't set up all of the, 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 the things which we are in the pr process of setting up, right? And I think the survey and all these little pieces are all part of that process to distinguish the flow of the customer coming in and then where they go. And that's, you know, in a restaurant, it's very obvious how to do that. In something like the Visionary Hub, it's not so obvious, right? Like it could be done in so many different ways. And I think that you, you know, you're, you're in a unique position because kind of like Carrie's out in, you know, she's in the real world and she's, she's in a perfect position to bring a lot of stuff into the real world. But right now, you know, her time restraints and whatever she's doing, she can only do within that thing. And Lori and Sylvia, you know, they've had a relationship. They've been there quite a while. Lori's been through so much. Kaylee's been there. So you're the one out, you're the outsider who's coming into that. And so you, you're, you're in a much more dealing with whatever is what has been. And then since you're the type of person who just as a business takes people, you know, you take people like that and help them to get forward. But now you're not coming as contract. You're actually part a member of the team. And now you're kind of, okay, well, here I am. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to come down there this week because. No, I just, it wasn't anything to do with Kaylee or them. I just was exhausted this week. So I didn't not go down because of that. Okay. I just, it had nothing to do. Cause I actually last week, 
Kaylee and I, I, I said, you know, Kaylee, I'm so, they told me and what they should have said is, can we have a clearing conversation? Yeah. Because they just hit me with it and didn't even preface it with anything. Oh. After our meeting in the morning, we had these people and we did this and then they just said, hey, Kaylee brought it. Here's all the um, conversation killer cards she picked out. I think you should talk to her. And that's how it came up. And that's how it was presented to me. And so I was like in tears and I was hurt yeah. because I felt like I had to defend myself and everything I did or said I now needed to defend and so you know like and I just said like I just want to get up and leave guys like that's how I feel right now uh Kaylee wasn't there and so we were talking and I just said like so we worked through it and 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 it but it was much like well you need to go talk to her and I'm like well why don't you just tell her to come talk to me well she's the kid so you should go to her and and make this right and it was like me but screw that right why are you anyway we worked through it and you know and I said going forward what's really helpful for me is if you guys say hey can we talk about something because what I need to do is I need to shift my perspective to be open to what you guys are saying because I was felt on the defensive because I was given no space to do that so going forward can you guys do that for me because then I can stop and hear what you're saying and not feel like I need to be on the defensive yeah yeah and, th th and that was it that's a not the best way to do the clear like that's 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 a good story for later on to go okay this is this is totally and, and so what I did I was thinking about it and processing it and and so you know when I, I so when I saw Kaylee later I just said hey Kaylee I just want to you know tell you how much I appreciate you being here and I'm really sorry if I did or said anything in the past I didn't realize it and so you know I wasn't trying to make offense so I just apologize I'm excited to move forward because I wanted to clear the air and if that meant me taking responsibility because not that we don't need to have these conversations but at the time, I didn't feel like they would be contributing to something because I didn't know what place she was coming from. So unless you're both coming from a place of learning and growth, yeah. all it becomes is one person picking at another person. Yeah, yeah, both, both have to have that attitude. Yeah, so we cleared the air and like, and I honestly said to, because Lori's like, you need to figure out what's bothering you with Kaylee. And I said, I have absolutely no issue with Kaylee. I said, you know, I, I can see a lot of her potential. I said, the only challenge is every time I talk to her, she's telling me about a different venture she's doing. And she's now not wanting to be a curler because now she's going to be a ski jumper. And, and so I said, every time, so I just, I said, honestly, I don't know how to connect her to anybody because she's showing up different, you know, like, and, and fair enough, right? And, and I said, you know, part of it is because of my personality, I'm somebody who will fix the problem. When you're sharing your frustrations and your challenges, Lori, I am assuming you want me to help you solve the problem. And if that's not the case, then it's important for me to just know you're just venting about it. But if I, I think you're looking for a solution, then I'm going to help. And, and so it, it was a huge learning thing. So I don't feel like if I, unless Kaylee said other stuff now, I haven't been around and I left it on a really positive note with her. So I kind of feel like if there's anything else that's on her and has nothing, it's like I haven't been there and I haven't not been there, but I was, I'm, I just needed to be home with my family. I have three young kids. So I didn't go because there was nothing needing my attention to be there. So, but I, so I have no idea. We haven't really talked as a, a group, like Lori couldn't attend our meeting on Thursday. So the three of us met and then we're meeting after this today at 3.30 to kind of have a conversation and talk about stuff. So I think, um, so I don't, I, I guess, what I'm trying to avoid for myself is not putting distance between myself and Kaylee or myself and Lori, yeah. because I, I'm almost hedging that there's going to be something else. And I just don't want to get into it because I want to savor the relationship. And so to me, the best way to do that is to pull out a little bit, not that I'm not invested, but I just don't want to create conflict. That's 
to me, that is absolutely what I don't want. And, and I guess I always approach my perspective of things that I, I personally, I either say something and it, with the, if, if something, if you did something that offended me or bothered me, I have two choices. I have evaluated and I say, okay, what do I need to do with this? And if it keeps bothering me, then I need to speak up in a, a, a appropriate way and say something to you. Like, hey, when you said or did this, you know, this is how I felt. How can we change that? Or that's where that person's at. And I know they're not going to make a change. So I choose to accept that part of where they're at and just, you know, not engage in that. And so I, I'm just like, but I didn't even realize all this stuff with Kaylee until I sat down talking to you was there. Cause I honestly, like, I just, but I'm like, I just, yeah, I think we're all kind of feeling a bit discombobulated as a team because we're, all been putting in a lot of energy and now we're like okay what does this mean and Carrie took possession of her new house and so you know she's moving into her new house and Lori had her speech it went great and now she's writing her book so I, I, I think we need to get back focused and say okay what level of energy is everyone wanting to contribute to the growth of the visionary hub because you have someone like Sylvia who's available and ready for everything and let's say if we're talking on percentages she's always giving a hundred percent and maybe for me I'm only able to give 60% because I have these other things. And maybe Lori, because she has these other things, and I'm not saying these are true, I'm just using maybe Lori's at 40% and Carrie's at 20. So it creates an imbalance because you have people saying, how much are we, and maybe someone's okay with 100%, but I think we just need to figure that out. And, and I think, also looking at you know the longer term plan like to, to look at it from a year point of view and a few years is very different from looking at the next month and the next kind of couple of weeks and stuff like that that i think that you're essentially it would you know it, to me it's it is going to be a long game for you guys and the it does take quite a bit of time sometimes to absorb what at least I'm putting forward, uh, let alone everything else that's happening. And mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've been doing this for 25 years on my own. So I mean, it's, uh, I might say it's long because I just, I know, I know things take a while, but it's, it's like there, there is actually a lot of momentum and, and energy behind this whole idea. And it's, it, to me, it's like when it goes, it's going to go like, and and to it's kind of like to me you guys are getting ready because you're like the first you're like you're, you're like the tip of the phalanx and it's kind of like to move from where you're at as these individuals and to a team and to attract you know building the processes and and it's it's uh i mean it, it truly is a sort of like a pioneering research experiment you know, and the, I'm really glad that you're there and I see, you know, your value and I see that you're, you're kind of like a missing piece that, you know, still it's going to take some time to find out. And I think, you know, the, the weekend that you go away is, is massive for you guys, right? Like it's, it's, it's going to put you guys in alignment and get you on the same page or show, show people, Hey, you know, I, I don't want to participate or something. Just, you know, one way or the other is it has to happen right so um i i uh i'm glad that you're so transparent and and vulnerable in a sense to to share what you've shared and i think that you know everything can be worked out you know. oh for sure it can i and i'm just i i want to because i really value like i value kaylee i value Lori, i value sylvia and i value carrie um that I want to I want to do it in a way that's going to be constructive and positive and so like if it's my issue and I need to get over it or move, like I'll that's me right and I guess I just 
I have a, an incredibly strong intuition. So like I can walk into a situation and I often will know what's going on with someone. So even I'll pick up on stuff that people don't even know. Right. And, and part of that is it creates a conflict because I know something's going on and, and it's hard not to feel like it's you. And, but I don't want to assume that maybe there isn't responsibility. So, so this is kind of that stage that I'm at. Right. And so I, I think, how do we all get on the same page about Kaylee? That's the first major conflict all of us have had, and we're all coming it from different perspectives. Right. And so I'm trying really hard not to, and it's not about sides, right? But there are two very different sides right now, right? You have two, and, and so, and then in my mind is like, well, what is the long-term purpose? Because if, the, if, if, is Kaylee a long-term member? And I would love her to be, but is that how she sees herself? Or are we talking three or four months, right? Because those are two completely different objectives. And, and so I think she needs to decide and be willing to put the energy in for whatever she wants that to be. If she wants to be connected to this long term, and I'm not talking about how she's connected with Lori or Sylvia, like that is a different completely relationship. But as far as the visionary hub is concerned, then she needs to decide what that is because I said to her last week I said how can I help you be successful what do you need to, and and she couldn't really tell me right and, and that's not surprising in her age and her role um but I just I, I guess I want to understand how open is she to the feedback right because in the capacity she's in all of us have a lot to offer her to make her incredibly successful and if I were her I look at it like four of these amazingly successful powerful women which can be a lot but if if you could spend four months with them three months with them and then you're doing your own business you if you can take all the learnings you will hit the ground running and almost explode and and I guess I look at it kind of you know from marketing right like I having had a business in the public for 10 years and working with a lot of business owners and stuff if that's what like because she loves PR and that's what she wants to do I think maybe that's kind of changed and it'll change it's like are you open to the feedback that will let you be more successful or are you not? And I, I think the, the challenge is every time you ask a question like that, you have, it's, then I get people can't respond on the spot, but it's hard to move forward when those things are asked and never revisited. Yeah. Yeah. So I am just trying, I, I don't have, the answer in my mind and I know what will happen is when we get together because I'll probably pose a question and then I'll just let everyone else kind of talk and then it'll kind of will come out to something as long as everyone's going to stick to what's been said because I think that's what's happened is we all agree as a four and then when it goes in and put out it it changes and it gets changed right so yeah, it's, I, I feel like this role that I'm in is, I, I feel burdened is a wrong word, but it's a, it is a big role when you're in this capacity, especially being a member and the builder and like what I do, because you see the full weight of the decisions and the actions that are taken. And so it's, it's not e easy to always be free and light. Well, if I can end with maybe a bit of a metaphor, where I think the cars in the field, uh, the four tires are spread out. Um, the, the tires need to make their way to the car, and you want everyone wants the car to run, but the the tires are in different positions. One's up in a tree, one's in some mud, one's one's rolling down a hill, and this other tire is looking at going, "Hey, man." you know, you got to get to the car. And so I'm going, hey, I've got this car, but I've never built it. And I've got some pieces that I know have to come together, but you guys got to come over here and you're going, yeah, okay, and okay. So I, 
I think the, the, the car, you're, 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 you're going to do it. It's going to happen. It's all part of the process. And, um, and I, I, I think you have a, a good attitude and, um, we should, we shall. it's, <laughs> we're going to get there. <laughs> I will live in your space for a while. I'll what? live in the, I said, I'll live in your space for a while. Okay. I'll, I'll exist up here and let go of my uh, need to see the plan. And I like, because in this capacity, like of who I am and how I function, that's such a key part of it to know where we're going. Right. And if I understood the metaphor and what you're saying, we just need to find the pieces and put them together. Um, and it's hard to let go of the vision of building the car and just look for the pieces. Uh, perfect. Perfect. Well, okay. Awesome. Well, we'll see you next week. Okay. Thank you. Bye.